Hi, welcome to JSA 353 Java API for JSON processing. I am Jitendra Kotam Raju. I am the specification lead for the JSR. HTML5 is a key theme for Java E7. And HTML5 allows rich user interface applications. That means uh, some of the processing that can also be done on the browser side. So this allows uh, thin server architectures where the UI will be downloaded only once and the rest of the data uh, would be processed, uh, would be transferred between the client and server multiple times. So this data could be coming on different protocols, for example, on WebSocket or HTTP. But primarily, the data is being exchanged using JSON format. Java E7 supports uh, JSON processing. This is new to Java E. And this processing is also uh, had a good support in JAXRS. JSON is not just only used in the web applications, but it could be used in uh, many other areas. So what is JSON? JSON is primarily a textual uh, lightweight data exchange format. Uh, it's uh, may very minimal in representation. It's very easy for humans and machine to read and write. And it's used heavily in RESTful web services since uh, it's part of most of the browsers support JavaScript. And uh, since it's native to the browsers, it's uh, heavily supported in browser and server communication. So for example, let's take a look at uh, one, one example of the JSON. Uh, in this example, uh, it's basically representing a person in JSON. And this is an object uh, structure, which has uh, object structure is primarily name value pairs. As you could see here, there are three name value pairs. One is the name, uh, and its value is Bob. And other name value pair is age, and the value is 20, and the phone. And its value itself is an array structure. So the array structure is a sequence of uh, values. Here there are two values, two phone numbers primarily. Both of them are strings. So as I said that JSON is primarily being used in uh, many of the RESTful web services. Uh, if you see many of the popular websites uh, like Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, they all offer RESTful web services, but the primary data exchange format is being JSON. Uh, in fact, some of the uh, these web services, they are uh, discontinuing support for XML. So for example, let's take a look at the Twitter search API. The Twitter search API provides the search results in JSON format, as you could see that uh, this here in this example, we show one JSON for one JSON tweet. So let's take a look at uh, first the XML usage in the RESTful web services. So JAXRS is the being the specification uh, for uh, doing the RESTful web services in the E platform. Let's take a look at the XML usage in JAXRS case. So here there is a RESTful web service. So that is returning a books representation as source object and and since the source is part of the platform and JAXRS runtime knows how to convert this source object into XML representation similarly here the book method the get book method is returning the book object and the book object could be converted into XML representation using JAXB API the platform has very good support for XML using JAXP and JAXP API. JAXRS also provides uh, something called content negotiation. For example, let's say the getBook method is invoked and it returns a book object. Based on the HTTP metadata uh, in the HTTP headers, the book could be represented as XML or JSON. So to do XML, we have standard API in the platform that is JAXP. But to do it in JSON, we don't have any standard uh, API as such in the platform. So, so that Java E is proposing a standard API for JSON uh, to fill this gap. Similar to what JAXP has done for parsing and processing, uh, so we are proposing one JSR that is for processing and parsing of JSON. And other JSR is uh, binding. Binding is primarily binding Java objects to JSON and vice versa. This is much similar to JAXP. This is being scheduled for Java E8. So the first JSR is Java API for JSON processing. So here we are proposed 
two APIs. One is the streaming API, and is uh, other is the object model API. Streaming API is a low-level API to produce and consume JSON, but is very efficient way to pass and generate JSON. It is much similar to the Stacks API in the XML world. On the other hand, the object model API is high-level API. It's much easier to use, and uh, some people call this object model API as a tree API, as you could build complete JSON in the memory. It's much similar to the DOM API in the XML world. A brief look at the API architecture. So the you could have multiple applications, and the applications could be built on top of object object model API or streaming API. And these APIs find the efficient implementation via a pluggable provider. So if you have any efficient efficient provider that implements the API, that could be picked up by the applications. The first abstraction in the streaming API that is a JSON parser. JSON parser is a pull parser. So the application is primarily in control of advancing the parser, and at each parser state, the application can know or can get the required data. So this is much similar to the uh, Stacks XML stream reader, and the application keeps advancing the parser to a different state. And for example, let's say some of the states like state start array, start object, etc. And at each state, the parser could get the necessary information. So let's take an example. Here there is a simple JSON. Uh, this is uh, you could consider this is something like uh, a person's JSON. Which has the first name, last name, and uh, basically a f list of phone numbers. So, in case of JSON parser, while parsing, uh, you would be, let's say, at the curly brace, you will have a start object event. And if you advance the parser to the next, you will go after the first name, you will get the key name event. Then, afterwards, the value for the uh, first name, that is John, you will get the value string. Similarly, you could keep advancing the parser to different states. If the parser is advanced to the much further, and you will get at uh, the value 25, you will get the value number parser event. Similarly, you keep advancing after the phone number, and at the uh, opening bracket, you will get the start array. So at each of this parser state, the application will have a way to get the necessary information. For example, if the application wants to get the value of John, so it uh, keep advancing the parser state to until the value string. So it keep advances, advancing until uh, like a start object is first being uh, the parser state, next the key name, next the value string. At the value string state, once it calls parser dot get string, it gets the value of John. Similarly, if it wants to get the value of uh, like age, it can advance the parser state to that particular event, and at that state, you could get the value of the age. So this way, the application is in completely control, and and there is no data stored in the inside the memory. It's basically a st stream of events being parsed, and the application is in completely in control. It could keep complete logic of the application in whatever uh, method it is basically parsing the JSON. Similarly, to produce JSON, we provided a JSON generator abstraction. So JSON generator is much similar to Stacks XML stream writer. And it can also be, also be created or configured with uh, any feature. For example, if you want to produce JSON uh, in a pretty format, you could configure the generator with a certain feature. So here also, Similar to JSON parser, the JSON could be generated in a streaming way. So there is nothing uh, like uh, stored inside the memory. It will be keep on generating uh, JSON in a streaming fashion. But it generates a JSON in a uh, in a well formed way. So for example, take a look at uh, one example. So on the right hand side, the JSON being produced could be coded as on the left hand side. So for example, first you start the, since the right, right hand is basically an array structure, you first start the array, and the array contains two objects. So you create basically write start object and end that object, and write the necessary name value pairs. Similarly, you write the second object and write the necessary name value pairs. 
and all these things are primarily done in a streaming fashion so for example the right start array emits opening bracket and the start object emits curly brace similarly the right name value pair it emits uh, the corresponding name value pair oh, similar to this uh, you could be generating complete uh, json in a streaming fashion so there is nothing stored in the memory it just being produced in a streaming fashion to any any output source so these are the two primary abstractions in the streaming api one is the json parser and other is the json generator so let's go to the next uh, object model api as i said some people call this as also a tree api primarily the complete json is built inside the memory so the primary abstractions in uh, object model api are json object and json array here the object structure is represented in json object similarly the array structure is represented in json array and we have builders to build this json object in json array and we also have json reader and writer so they provide a way to build or read json object in json array from input source or they provide uh, a way to write json object in json array to a output source let's uh, look at them uh, in depth so json object is primarily a map interface to hold name value pairs and we also made this as immutable map object so you could access any of the name value pairs using map methods or we could also use some of the convenient access methods that's are available on json object so let's take a example so for example you have a json object and you want to get the list of names you could use the key set method which is a standard map method you know that there is a name value pair and the name being the foo and the value being the string you could use json object dot get string and pass the foo name you will get the corresponding string value similarly let's say there is a name value pair for the bar name and the value being a json number you could probably use json object dot get integer and you pass the name value pass the name which is bar then you get the corresponding integer value so similar to these methods there are some other accessor uh, convenient accessor methods that could be used to navigate the json object or to get any information in the json object so other abstraction is json array to represent uh, json array structure so this is primarily a list interface and it's also being made as immutable so json array primarily represents a sequence of values uh, in json or uh, similar to json map it also has convenient accessor methods which could be used to get any necessary information in the array or the sequence of values in that json array so let's take example here so for example you want to get a value at index 0 you could use json array dot get and which is a standard list method so you get a json value or you know that at index zero you have a string value json string value you could use directly array dot get string and pass the index you get a string value so this is a convenient uh, accessor method to get the string value at a particular index or for example if you have an integer number at index 2 you could directly use the convenient accessor method to get that json number so since these objects are immutable there needs to be a way to build these uh, objects so that's what the json builders uh, provide this functionality json builders can be used to build json object and json array from scratch they can they can be used for method chaining and you could also use if there are any existing json object and json array those can also be used as part of building a bigger json object and uh, uh, bigger json array so let's take an example for that for example we are building a json array corresponding to whatever is there on the right hand side so here is a json array and the json array contains two objects so that's what so first we are creating a uh, the array itself is being created using a array builder and we are adding two objects that are being created using the object builder so once we create the object builders we are adding the necessary name value pairs in that object 
so this is the way you create uh, json using the array builder and the object builder so let's go to the other abstraction which is the json reader for example uh, the json may be there already in a input source so you could use json reader to read this json object and json array from that input source the input source could be a character stream or it could be a byte stream and similar to json generator json parser the reader also could be configured with any features so these features could be extensible mechanism uh, a provider could provide so let's take an example here so, so you have a input source which is io which has uh, some json and in fact it's uh, basically a json object structure so you could create first a reader so you are creating here json dot create reader creates a json reader using the reader you call reader dot read object and you got the corresponding json object so similarly json object and json array could be written to a output source so the output source could be a character stream or a byte stream so the way you create a writer is json dot create writer and uh, give that output source and once you have the json writer you write that object that is a json object uh, you could write it using writer dot write object the json cre uh, writer also could be configured uh, with some features for example you want to emit this json in a pretty format you could use uh, you could configure the writer for a pretty printing so we integrated json support in other parts of the e primarily with uh, jaxrs so in jaxrs resource methods one could use json object json array as uh, parameter or written types of the resource methods if you are producing uh, they could be in the written types and if you are consuming they could be part of the parameter types uh, similarly the super type of json object in json array that is the json structure that could also be part of uh, parameter or written types of these resource methods that way you could consume json in jaxrs restful web services very easily so let's come to the api summary the api provides a way to parse input streams and turn them into immutable objects or it it could parse uh, input streams into a event stream like the the way json parser does it similarly you could write uh, uh, the immutable objects to the output streams and also you can use a, a list of e event streams to the output streams you could do that uh, and it provides immutable objects those could be navigated and you could get uh, some information from the immutable objects and these immutable objects can also be built this api primarily becomes a building block for other bigger frameworks like data binding transformation querying and any other manipulation apis so some of the information about json and other parts of the java ee technology could be loaded the resources can be found on this page thanks for listening to jsr 353 java api for json processing